Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGange, member of the Media Speaks, doing a political commentary here for everyone. Do me a favor and hit subscribe. And after you hit subscribe, do me another favor. Let me know if you took it. Because I have had a listener or three tell me that they have hit subscribe on the Correct Views channel and it doesn't log in. So I'm interested to know two things. Are you having any trouble logging in, or excuse me, subscribing to the Correct Views? And are you having any trouble subscribing to the Media Speaks? And I'm not just saying this to get subscribers. If you think I am, then hit subscribe. And if it works, hit unsubscribe. I don't care. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'd rather you didn't, but you can. But let me know if it works or not. Um, having said that, we're going to get straight into the uh, the news before I do lose the people that tuned in and we're managing to hit subscribe. Boston Herald Amid Trump surge, nearly 20,000 people in Massachusetts, uh, their voters have quit the Democratic Party. Now, maybe they quit the Democratic Party because Sanders is doing badly. And they're all about to vote for the Green Party. And they're going to hug trees and they're going to convince you that global warming is, in fact, Sure, that's going to happen. Or they have left in droves, uh, like uh, Diamond and Silk has suggested that we all do, uh, and moved to the Republican Party, or at least independent, so that they are able to vote for Donald Trump. Now, that, I think, friends, is the more likely of the two scenarios that I have given you. Um, friends, Trump is taking over. And granted, I liked, I liked Rand before, but Trump <laughs> at least has a plan for our jobs, if nothing else. And we haven't had a president that it's known a damn thing about jobs in quite some time. Nearly 20,000 Bay State Democrats have fled the party this winter, with thousands doing so to join the Republican ranks to the state's top elections official. Um, Secretary of State William Galvin said more than 16,300 Democrats have shed their party affiliation and become independent voters since January 1st, while nearly 3,500 shifted to the mass GOP ahead of tomorrow's Super Tuesday. Of course, I'll be uh, home letting you hit subscribe because I'm going to make sure that you have the news when you wake up tomorrow, I promise you, I will make sure the news is here about that Super Tuesday. You have my word on it unless I'm like, I'm struck by lightning. I'll be here. You, I'll give you your news right here on it. Um, here's the other good thing about them going independent. That leaves the option open that if the Trumpster were to go to the dumpster and uh, completely crash and not have a good Super Tuesday, which I don't think will happen. <laughs> Yes, but if it were to happen, they can still vote for, God forbid, the Democrat, or they can vote Libertarian. Do you know that Gary Johnson and John McAfee right now, the inventor of the virus killer as we know it, never really worked all that great, but the inventor of the virus killer, the first person to realize that this was a problem and actually make a company to do something about it that was at least massively recognized was John McAfee, he is running against Gary Johnson, the very successful New Mexico governor for two different terms for the libertarian ticket. These people that are switching to independent, depending on the laws in their state, are usually able to vote libertarian or independent or Democrat or constitutionalist or unionist. They're able to move parties when they do that. So this is a massive shakeup for the Democrats in more ways than you think. And you might say, well, hell, out of all those people, only a hundred of those in any one state are gonna go ahead and vote for a third party. 
okay, if this race is real close between Hillary and Donald, those people could make a big difference. And these people in Massachusetts, and thousands now, have gone to independent or Republican. They largely want Trump, but if you don't give them Trump, they could go in many directions. It's like a grenade. Uh, Galvin called both significant changes that dwarf similar shifts ahead of other primary votes, including in 2000 when some Democrats flocked from the party in order to cast a vote for John McCain. The primary reason, Galvin said, is his guess is simple, the Trump phenomenon. And uh, again, this Trump is not racist. Trump does not hate Hey, black people, that's not what it is. Trump wants what is fair for the country. We should not be having, for instance, uh, we should not be having people stationed all over the Middle East. We should not be taking care of everybody. And I got a whole bunch of viewers. Hello, guys. Um, we should not be taking care of half the freaking world for nothing. Now, I understand wanting to get rid of ISIS. Who wouldn't want to get rid of ISIS? Really, you have to be an idiot. But beyond that, Trump doesn't want to start any wars. Trump wants to get us out of all of these places. And friends, I know he's not a libertarian. He's a populist. I get it. He's not perfect. I get it. Would I rather have a libertarian? Yes. But do you understand that uh, Donald Trump and Gary Johnson are the only two people running right now? Well, maybe McAfee don't want to get us out of these areas. A lot of you listening to me, you hate the Republicans. I'm a libertarian, I get it. But you hate the Republicans because the Republicans are in favor of war. Republicans have gotten us into this mess in Iraq. And is anybody in favor of troops on the ground in Syria? No. Now, if you're fighting ISIS, most of America can bend that bar because we're talking about the worst of the worst here, regardless of who funded them. And there's some nefarious names that could come up there. But most Americans can bend far enough to accept a war with ISIS. We don't want to be protecting Israel. Israel can protect itself. Am I pro-Israel? Yes. I'm pro-Israel, as in when they get bombed, they should be able to bomb the Palestinians back. But America has no business there. America has no business in Japan. This is ridiculous. Do you know who's against this? The libertarians and Donald Trump, who again is not a libertarian. I'm comparing them. I'm not saying he's a libertarian. You have no idea, friends. If, if I don't clarify that, I'll end up with comments like you wouldn't believe. Americans, according to DailyCaller.com, will head to the polls Tuesday, and they are right, to vote on who they believe should represent their party in the general election. Well, all of you listening know that I am not voting for anybody that's currently in this running except Donald Trump. Can Donald Trump lose my vote? Oh, yes, he can. How? Well, I can tell you one way. I woke up and I saw the thumbnail for the... Chris Christie endorsement, but it looked like Donald Trump had picked Chris Christie as his running mate. I was half asleep. I had just gotten up and I saw the thumbnail. I about had a heart attack. And my first thought was, Donald Trump, you have just lost my vote. You may as well have picked Oprah Winfrey, like you said before. You have just lost my vote. Very happy to see that it was just Chris Christie endorsing Trump, not his VP. So I realized that, yeah, you, Donald Trump can still lose my vote by picking Chris Christie, for one thing. But a lot of you want to know where, where, the, where, where everybody lies in terms of uh, global warming. And uh, many of you know I have called it all. I have proved it many times. Man-made global warming is... A lie. There is no man-made global warming. You can prove it um, as Ted Cruz will do here in a minute. I will get to it. You can look up all of Ted Cruz's facts. By the way, it's real easy. Just search in what I'm about to read and he'll show you the scientific facts. It's not It's not Ted Cruz coming up with it. It's Ted Cruz being right. Am I voting for him? No, but the man is still right. And um, you can look up Climategate. You can look up Lord Moncton. You can look up NASA 
studies where they have shown that for the last 15 to 18 years, the, the planet hasn't warmed at all. Um, in Ohio, where I am, it hasn't snowed all winter. That's due to the El Nino La Nina effect. It's been going on for the last, I don't know how many thousands of years. It's, it happens all the time. It's not global warming. Face it, friends, if it was global warming, Ohio has heated up by like, I don't know, 30 degrees, 20 degrees this winter. That's because of the El Nino La Nina tides. Look those up if you don't know what they are. What they are. It's a shifting of the oceans that has happened always. I say it with the quotey fingers because not always has like in terms of the history of the earth. But in terms of what you and I would consider always, it has always been for thousands of years. And when it happens, it changed the it changes the climate that it happens in. And it happens to be America's term. Now, even you tree huggers listening to this know that I'm right. Because if you were to heat the entire planet by 30 degrees, everybody would be dead, gone. So, no, obviously, even, even the tree huggers agree with me on this. So, having said that, with the proof that we have that man is not warming the planet, let's see what each of the politicians believe. And they're going to get uh, they're going to get the appropriate sound effects based on how correct they are because you are listening, in fact, to the correct views. Hit subscribe. Donald Trump, the real estate mogul, has repeatedly written tweets skeptical of global warming. <laughs> Trump has called global warming, and there's a link for all of it here. You can see on FactCam a hoax mythical, a great word, con job, better description, non-existent, and we're going to swear, hit, 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 bullshit. He views policies created to fight global warming as hurtful to the U.S. manufacturing competitiveness with China. And he is right. Do you think China is worried about global warming? Why are they not? Because it isn't happening. Morons. Marco Rubio, where does he stand? The Florida senator, who's going to lose Florida to Donald Trump, believes global warming is happening, but doesn't think humans are the main cause. Rubio does not believe Obama's attempts to fight global warming will have much of an impact. I do not believe that the laws that they propose will pass will do anything about it, except it will destroy our economy. And he supports the Keystone XL pipeline, thankfully. And he also opposes the Environmental Protection Agency Clean Air Act and wants to reduce fuel regulations on fracking. So he says he believes in global warming, but stands behind all of the things that the people that don't believe in global warming do. So you will either believe that he is absolutely telling the truth while saying two things at once, <laughs> or you may question Rubio. Ted Cruz, where does Cruz stand? The Texas senator is perhaps the most vocal global warming skeptic in the race. <laughs> he is the only candidate to put forward a technical argument against it, citing satellite temperature records, which show no global warming for the last 18 years, friends, it's all about how much money can they steal from you. How do you address the fact that in the last 18 years, these satellite data show no, that would be zero for you Usher fans, no demonstrable warming whatsoever. Cruz asks the Era Club President Aaron Mayer during a congressional hearing, of which you will see the link here at Daily Caller, the computer models say that there should be a dramatic warming. And yet the actual satellites taking the measurement don't show any significant warming. And he is absolutely right on it. Now, I could show you a graph of, uh, uh, it, you see there, I'm in the band passing time. I can show you a graph that says how we are and were predicted to sell 2 billion records. Anybody believe me? Uh, no, absolutely no one. However, when you look at what we really sold, it's, it's 
it's less than two billion. But oh well, the graphs and scientists have said this is where it was supposed to go. Ridiculous. All right, John Kasich, the Ohio governor, has repeatedly stated that he believes global warming is caused by humans and says this sets him apart from other GOP candidates. Yeah, they're right and you're wrong. I know that human beings affected the climate case, she said in an interview in Vermont last week. I know it's apostasy to the Republican Party to say that, I guess. Well, I've always been being able to challenge the status quo. Yeah, and being able to challenge the fact that uh, you read reports that are paid for in order to be wrong. <laughs> ben Carson, neurosurgeon Ben Carson, believes global warming exists, but said it's a natural event and politically irrelevant. Now, see, I'm willing to listen to that because... It is very likely, we know for sure that the planet changed its axis a bit due to the effects of the 2011 earthquake in Japan that caused Fukushima. We know that there was a time when there were waters in Israel where there are now dry gulches. The planet has changed and done so geographic, geologically speaking recently. So, Kasich isn't, I mean, excuse me, Carson isn't so far off here. Kasich is way off. Carson's pretty on point. There is always going to be either cooling or warming going on, Carson said during an interview in Iowa. As far as I'm concerned, that's irrelevant. That's fine. Now, for the people who are so unbelievably wrong that it isn't even funny, Hillary Clinton. Hillary, the former Secretary of State, Sig Heil. Oh, never mind. Hold on. I need my. I need my. I need my proper. I. I've decided that you are not allowed to report or do commentary, as it were, on Hillary Clinton without your Hillary Clinton halo. So let me get that ready for you. Where is it? All right. All right. Let me scoot down so you can see it. All right. Here we go. You cannot report or do commentary without your Hillary Clinton halo, because God knows she's always right and she always tells the truth. Sig Heil, the former Secretary of State, plans to address global warming by building half a billion solar panels. No, not her. You, with your tax dollars, get to build half a billion solar panels and extending green energy tax credits. That means they build it with your money and get tax credits for doing so. Hillary stated she will make the production tax credit for wind and solar permanent which isn't such a bad idea, except for the fact that she's deciding how your money should be spent. It would be better off if you wanted to do it, you could donate to it, eliminate the middleman, and then make a lot more money with her idea than she will with her idea during it her way. We listened to it. I was right. Clinton says global warming is mostly driven by carbon dioxide from power plants and was defended the EPA's clean power plan. So Hillary Clinton is bad. Can't let me get my halo off here now that I'm done with her. Uh, we know that she is unbelievably wrong, but can it get worse? It can. Bernie Sanders, of course, can make everything worse. The Vermont senator is probably the most vocal, and I would say most wrong, global warming alarmist in the race and promises to go even further than President Barack Obama in terms of regulations. That would mean in terms of going into your pocketbook for something that hasn't happened in 18 years in order to curb warming. Oh, God. The scientists are virtually unanimous, especially when they're bought and paid for by the UN, and that's who you're quoting that climate change is real, he says, is caused by human activity, like breathing, and is already causing devastating problems in the United States and around the world. And they tell us if we do not act boldly, the situation will only come much worse. This is the campaign that thinks that global warming is more of a curse and more of a fear than ISIS. No, it's just about spreading lies about things that you said would happen that didn't, and you plan on people actually believing it. 
All right, guys, moving on. Michael Snyder, the awful news coming from him today. End of the American dream is who he writes for. Cell phones are cooking our reproductive organs and causing an epidemic of cancer. Now, friends, I, I tend to forget things all the time. What was I talking about? I'm kidding. I tend to forget things all the time. I am not a good person to do what I do in terms of cell phones because I do not leave them in my pocket. I work like it's a five minute drive at the most. If I don't remember to put it on my dashboard cup holder, I will put the cell phone down by Mr. Happy, but I do not keep my cell phone in my pocket because I have shown you all of you people. That's why you hit subscribe. I have told you so many times what happens. In terms of keeping cell phones, ladies, near the tatas, I am your typical male pig. Please save your titties. Uh, I'm kidding, but you know what I mean. Um, don't keep your cell phone in your bra. Men who wear bras, don't do it. Um, Got to appeal to everyone now. Um, don't keep it in your pants, male or female, unless you like ovarian cancer, unless you would like to lose a testicle. That would be cutting off your balls for you, Chris Brown man. Um, do you want that? Because I've shown you the studies about it, and we now have another one. Is your cell phone keeping you from having kids and slowly killing you at the same time? It says most people have no idea that one of the greatest threats to their health may be something that they are willingly carrying around with them all day long. And again, with my memory, I sidetracked myself. I, I thought I was kidding. I have lost a number of cell phones because I leave them sitting on tables and I leave them sitting in restaurants and places. I, I love the new password with your twisty finger thing because when they steal my phone now and I leave it behind, um, at least they can't find all my uh, you know, pictures of Matt goat porn. I'm kidding. I'm um, No, I'm not. No. Um, the, the, all jokes aside, they can't find um, all of the personal data that you have. They can't get your credit card number. They can't get all this. You know what password. It used to be a lot more frightening when you would leave your um, cell phone behind because anybody that flipped it open could just take your phone number and if you bow, I don't bank, but if you were to bank online, anything could be stolen off your phone. Um, it's thankfully now that's not the case because I might spend money on cell phone, but I buy them used on Craigslist, so it's not that bad. I'll cheap on strikes again. I mean, really, I don't, it, it, it gets the job done. You know what I'm saying? But um, I don't care if I lose my phone. I would rather lose my phone than my nutsack. And if that's crazy to you, then go ahead and call me crazy. But I promise you it's a better idea. Listen to this. A brand new study, it says, has just come out that shows that men that carry around cell phones in their pockets continually are much less fertile than other men. Of course, we have known that cell phone use has some very nasty consequences for our health for a very long time. As you will see below, it goes on, studies have shown that there is a very clear link between cell phone use and cancer. Even to learning all of these things, most people will just continue to use their cell phones normally. You know, most people believe what they want to believe, and most people don't want to believe that cell phone use is harmful. Um, I have an interesting story for those of you that hit subscribe. This might be why a little bit of a story for you. Um, back when chat rooms mattered, of course, they're as old as the pager these days, but about 10 or 11 years ago when chat rooms were still common, I was on a phone line internet. Yes, I was that poor. It was my white privilege. Um, I was on a phone line and I used to go to chat rooms to meet people. I was bored. And I met who became one of my lifelong friends, Giselle. We agree on virtually nothing. She's a tree hugger who believes that man is warming the planet, and I love her dearly. We met in a chat room and have been friends for 10 or 11 years. I talk to her, or at least text her virtually every day. Um, that kind of thing that goes on would normally have a phone by your head all the time. No, 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 no. 
That thing has been on speakerphone since I first got cell phones. Absolutely refuse to put this thing to my head. And I encourage anybody listening to my voice to not hold your cell phone up here like this when you're yakking away, do not put it in your pocket, do not put it in your freaking bra so that you can see if you can radiate your freaking areola. Yes, I said it, because I'm telling you, this is cancer. Do you understand? One of the most respected news sources in the UK has reported on the news study that I just mentioned above. The following is an excerpt, from, an excerpt from the article. There is a link right there on FactCam. The study by highly respected specialists found that sperm levels of men who kept their phones in their pocket during the day were seriously affected in 47% of cases compared to just 11% of the general population. Now, when I went to school, 11 and 47 were vastly different numbers, so it's not a small difference. That's for you Lady Gaga fans. Professor Martha Dernfield of the uh, Tech Technion University in Haifa, Haifa said, we analyzed the amount of active swimming sperm and the quality and found that it had been reduced. We think this is being caused by the heating of the sperm from the phone and by the electromagnetic activity. Now, friends, please listen to me. Radioactivity and the damage done by it is largely done by the sad fact that you can't see it, smell it, feel it, or taste it. Now, some people have said when they've been radiated, they can taste a metallic taste in their mouth. That is true. But if you are tasting a metallic taste in your mouth, you have been hit by such an ungodly high dose that you're already probably doomed. You can smell it, see it, usually taste it, feel it, but it's cooking your cells. There are things called becquerels, and here's what a becquerel is. Um, and my regular Fukushima listeners know this. A becquerel is a tiny, tiny element that will explode inside of you on a tiny atomic level and that explosion will hit other cells it's, it's it's a cooking effect your body is actually cooking when radioactivity hits you that's why you're not supposed to get too many x-rays um those becquerels depending on what the radionuclei is will have a chance of giving you cancer by hitting another cell based on reactions per second. In some instances where the radionuclei dies, depending on its half-life, this may not go on forever. In instances where it's like plutonium or uranium, where it goes on for millions of years, you will have this every second for life. There are many becquerels at one time. And a nuclear explosion, for instance, it's much greater than a small x-ray. But these are giving you safe doses at a constant rate. How many of you know what water drip torture is? They used to put people on their backs and drip water onto their heads. And they would do it until they went insane. And it would take hours until it became agony. Safe doses. Also, they say, hey, it's safe to be around your cell phone because it's just you. Tell that to the bus driver. Tell that to the person that works in the mall. How do we know what safe is? And that's exactly what I'm saying. They put a safe amount of fluoride in the water. Safe for who? A 200-pound guy or an infant? Kind of things matter, right, people? Then it matters. Since it doesn't take a genius to figure this out, if you put an electro electronic device next to your next to your reproductive organs day after day, of course it's going to have an effect. Other studies were concluded previously have come up with similar results, such as the example shown here. Again, fact cam, go to the site, Prison Planet, cell phones are cooking our reproductive organs. 
Men who carry a cell phone in their pants pocket may harm their sperm and reduce their chances of having children. The research team analyzed the findings. And again, and, you know, that's a great way to uh, go ahead and uh, not have kids. I'm going to go ahead and use it. Not so quick. Using your cell phone for just 20 minutes a day, according to Igor Yakamenko, who did a study that was released in 2015, 20 minutes a day for five years increased the risk of one type of brain tumor threefold. And using the phone an hour a day for four years upped the risk of some tumors three to five times. You know what? That's why when I talked to my wonderful friend Giselle, who would not join me on air today, even though I asked her to, she didn't. Um, I'm happy I didn't spend five years talking to her with that held up to my head. I'm sorry. Listen to this from Natural News. In 2011, the International Agency for Research on Cancer officially classified RFR as a possible carcinogen. That means it causes cancer for you weekend fans. This came a year after the International Interphone Study found that people who used a cell phone for 10 years were 40% more likely to develop brain tumors. The risk was 400% higher among those who started using the cell phones before the age of 20. Decade-long cell phone users were also more likely to develop par parotid gland tumors and 300%, that's quite high, to develop acoustic nerve disorders. Now, friends, this is important. I just spent a lot of time on that because I'll tell you what, I've got people listening to this that hate Trump. I've got people listening to this that love Trump. Do I have anyone at all that likes cancer? Not a one. So please, please don't keep your cell phone in your pants pocket. Don't keep your cell phone in the ta talk cup. And do not hold it to your head unless you absolutely have to and even then do not do it for extended periods of time friends listen to this this is more from the uh the religion of peace here mirror.co.uk in moscow i have a child beheading the first picture of murdered girl whose nanny was found waving the severed head in the street um, it says warning graphic content. I promise you the pictures you're going to see on fact cam, they have the head pixelated. But unfortunately, this is the poor, uh, I believe, MRDD child who this was done to. So this here, as you see on fact cam, is the first picture of the murdered four-year-old girl whose severed head was found being carried in the street by her nanny. The 39-year-old woman has been arrested after carrying the four-year-old child's head while shouting, Allahu Akbar, and I'm a terrorist. Now, again, this woman might not be a terrorist. She might just be a crazy person who happens to be Islamic, and that's not a reflection on the Islamic religion. I could buy that for an hour. The point is, if a Christian had done this and said they did it in the name of Jesus to stop abortions, they would say, no, that person isn't crazy. He's a perfectly logical Christian. I don't know which it is, but this is a very disturbing, disturbing story. A 39-year-old woman has been arrested. Again, she was arrested. Uh, I hate when they repeat themselves in stories. A half dozen police officers swooped near, I'm going to try, Oktyabrskoy Pole metro station in Moscow, Russia. As the woman reportedly shouted, she had a bomb. Uh, okay, T Y A B R S K O Y E, if you think you can do better than I did. The girl's mom was later been taken away by paramedics after being told her daughter had been decapitated before having her head paraded through the streets. Uh, police later revealed the girl's headless body had been found inside of a burning apartment nearby. Local media have identified the nanny as Gola Chekatra Buka Boba Kolova from Uzbekistan in Central Asia. And her victim was Nestia M. Uh, they don't give the last name because it's a minor. Um, and the girl's mom is being taken away, it says, because she pretty much had a breakdown upon hearing of it. Um, officers say the arrested woman 
was her babysitter and had waited until her parents left before carrying out the attack. The girl's mother, it goes on, Eka Tarinia, God be with her, is now being treated in a hospital. I love how they say in a hospital instead of in the hospital. After collapsing when she was told of the news by police. Uh, friends, I am going to give you a bit of video here. It's 52 seconds long. I'm going to stop at 30 seconds in it because if I don't comment every 30 seconds, they don't call it fair use. And you got to go with what you're given. Now, again, this this is um this is serious content here. Now again, what you're watching there is it's pixelated. Um she's carrying in a burqa or at least a hijab a uh, a child's head and waving it in the air <laughs> All right, that's it. Well, I mean, we're not going to be gross here. I just want you to be right. I get people telling me I'm not telling the truth, friends. That's some RT. Russian investigators said they had charged the nanny with murder. I would hope so. She is currently undergoing psychiatric testing to see if she is mentally sound and able to understand the significance of a crime. Supposedly, she did this. Why? Because her husband cheated on her. This is not good. Um, this is where the mother found out here. And this is also, again, uh, courtesy of RT. Right. And again, we're not going to watch uh, something sad for the sake of being sad, but there's a few seconds of it. You can look up the rest if you want, but so that you know I'm telling the truth. Moscow's investigative committee said in a statement, given the clearly deranged behavior of the detainee, investigators swiftly ordered her to undergo psychiatric tests. It was at Metro Station, and uh, again, you saw, guys saw the footage. I mean, uh, that's pretty much its own story there. It'll be interesting to see what twists and turns that take. Uh, God be with that family today. Friends, you're listening to the correct views, and you know who helps the correct views. Do you have any idea? Sticker Jerky. If you're looking at this and you're watching this show, a huge help to this show, Sticker Jerky. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go to Sticker Jerky and let them know that you heard about the show from the correct views. Go ahead and make your order. And on checkout, go ahead and type in correct views or the correct views. And you're going to find out that you're saving a lot of money stickers and that is why I get they're, they're amazing stickers an amazing company and thankfully they're supporting the show it's nice to have somebody supporting the show who you actually can believe in and look into the camera and honestly say they're good people come on it's David Lake from the media speaks um listen to this according to Ars Technica with new skin cells scientists can make many thinking version of your brain now I had the very, very unpleasant experience of going to the calling hours for my friend Ken Lippert, who uh, recently passed on. Shout out to a Schneeberger funeral home for doing an amazing job with the man. He smoked and got lung cancer, and it metastasized his brain. Now, he had beaten the lung cancer portion of it. Please don't smoke cigarettes. He had beaten the lung cancer part of it, uh, but unfortunately not the brain cancer part. So for those of you that have lost someone that you care about in such a way, this will be interesting news to you. And it's time that we get some good news after the awful beheading story we just had. I don't wish to have everybody tune into my show and look at me like I'm the Grim Reaper. We need some good news, do we not? Washington, tiny rolling balls of brain cells knocking around in a lab may one day help you from losing your marbles, among other things. These small cellular balls act like mini brains, mimicking aspects of the real thing, including foaming, nogging-like structures 
and pulsing with electrical signals like a thinking mind, the researchers reported Friday at the annual meeting of the American Association for the Advancement of Science in Washington, who tried to pick the longest name in all of human history. The mini brains, which can be personalized based on whose cells they are made from, may soon help scientists study a wide variety of diseases and health problems, from autism to, po to uh, from autism to Parkinson's to multiple sclerosis and Alzheimer's, as well as stroke, brain trauma, and infections like the Zika virus. It says there are a variety of places where a mini brain could be useful. In some cases, they may offer a cheaper, more ethical, and more realistic model for human health than mice and other animals, he and other researchers said. And that's from uh, Wayne Drivers at Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Inc. Researchers who developed the wee noodles, led by Tom Hartung at John Hopkins University, Bloomberg School of Public Health, hope to save the mini brains and have them commercially available this year. I'm sorry, have them commercially available this year. I fatigue, friends. No breaks. I've been on for a minute. Give me a break. Uh, Hartung admits we are not the first to the or fanciest. Other miniature brains have already been made that are more complex and brain-shaped than the spherical. Yet these tiny brains can be difficult to create and work with. Hartung says some require embryonic stem cells to make, which are tricky to get and ethically murky to use. Theirs don't. Some of the miniature brains take months to grow and are relatively large, uh, relatively five millimeters, which means they quickly rot from the inside out because they lack blood vessels and circulation. So none of that is true of the brains that Hartung is talking about. Um, and they started off with easy to collect adult skin cells for those stem cells. For those of you who are worried about uh, embryonic skin cells, what is the skin cells from adults? Chemically coax them to revert to stem cells, made adult cells into stem cells, nixing the need for the embryonic version. So this is really, really good news. Um, he says right now he's only selling hopes, but there has been great, great promise showed in this. Um, and they could possibly be used for nerve cell reconstruction and a little bit of good news here on the Correct views. <laughs> Next slide, OSHTFplan.com. A jaw-dropping prediction. Silver will head towards a $400 price. Now, it's at like 16 18 right now as I go live. Do I think that this is going to happen? No. But if the man is half wrong... It's going to be $200. So I don't think the man is so epically wrong and so unbelievably stupid that he would make a prediction and it would get printed if people didn't have some respect for the person saying it. And he does have a bit of credentials behind him. And he has been right on this kind of thing in the past. So I'm going to go ahead and give you my commentary on it. As panic gripped global financial markets and stocks collapsed after the new year, investors around the world began to shift capital to safe haven assets. Nowhere was this more evident than in precious metals, which up until recently have seen a significant drop since the all-time highs reached in 2011. Uh, hello, shout out to uh, my uh, Celine, my friend who won the uh, gold, the silver ounce. It is being sent to you, by the way. Last week, we noted that there were literally lines around the block, and there's a link in there. It happened in Good Oriolden. As concerned individuals who had lost trust in the system anxiously awaited their chance to shift their paper currency into physical assets. It was a major indicator of what we can expect in the future should the economy collapse or the monetary systems of the globe come under threat. Uh, we are already seeing the Asian markets crash in great fury. It says, in fact, we've seen this time and time again. As Greece's economy crashed in 2010, the citizens of the beleaguered country lost access to critical medicines and saw a barter economy emerge where people trade amongst themselves. And the price of gold in the global market was trading about $1,100 an ounce. But on the streets of Greece, people who already owned it, however, people were willing to pay as much as $1,700. And in Zimbabwe, we've reported on this, uh, look up correct view to Zimbabwe, when their currency hyperinflated, people could be found for flakes of 
panning for flakes of gold just so they could buy food to feed their families. Well, according to uh, Turk, who a recent interview in King World News, silver first has to break the end downtrend line. That means uh, the line that silver needs to break above roughly $18, which is a little bit more than it is now. When it does, it will be a signal that silver has begun forming a new uptrend. Then that uptrend needs to take silver to $50 an ounce, completing the handle part of the pattern, which is in his a teacup analogy. Third, silver needs to break above the neckline of 50. When that happens, silver will finally begin a bull market and will head toward the $400 price, which I don't know if I believe. That can be expected in this teacup and handle pattern. Well, let, me, let me tell you what. If it goes up to just 50 or 60 or 100 amounts, I'll be thrilled. And that's why I'm saying now is the time to buy, friends. And that brings us to... A full left the club tipsy. The dum 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 of the day. That's right. Time for the dum 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 of the day. Brought to you by Change Transportation. If you're going to catch a taxi anywhere, don't call Change Transportation. Tell them you heard about the correct views and enjoy your discount price match. If you wish, they'll beat it. Kit Daniels, Prison Planet, Black Lives Matter, accuses public library of white supremacy. Why? Because the library wouldn't allow them to be racist. <laughs> The Nashville chapter of Black Lives Matter accused a public library of white supremacy after librarians refused to host a meeting which banned whites from attending. Now, how about whites wanted to have a meeting where blacks couldn't attend? I bet you that would go over well. <laughs> And no, I wouldn't be in favor of it, but you get my point. BLM Nashville attempted to set up a meeting at the North Branch Library in North Nashville, but after group organizer and racist Joshua Crutchfield said that only black people as well as non-black people of color were allowed to attend, the library told the BLM to find a new location. Yes, because white people don't pay taxes for the public library, only black people do. All meetings at our facilities must be open to the general public and news media. <laughs> library spokesperson Emily Wattenball said, we're a library. We are taxpayer funded. And that's what's great. The average Black Lives Matter supporter has an IQ of about 85. This has been proven. And you can tell by their, they know nothing. They, are, they, they believe in white privilege, for crying out loud. Well, we've already dispelled that. Look up correct views, white privilege. We have to be open to anyone, anytime. Well, I'm sure they don't mean 3 in the end. I'm a really dumb quote, but I know what she means. In response, BLM Nashville announced the change to venue with the following sign, which is why they get the dumb of the day. Due to white supremacy in our government, this week's BLM general body meeting location has been changed. They moved it to the Dixon Memorial United Methodist Church because we all know that Jesus Christ was a racist. How in the world are you going to allow racists to have a church all to themselves? This church should have said that there is only one race, the human race. We are called to know only one race, according to the Bible, and that is to run the good race, which you are to do for Jesus Christ. That is the only race that exists. <laughs> Try telling that to the idiots at the Dixon Memorial Methodist Church who couldn't be reached for comment on why any church would host a meeting that excludes people by race because the Bible makes numerous statements promoting equality, such as Galatians 3.28. There is no longer Jew nor Greek, nor is there longer slave nor free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever heard that, Dixon Methodist Church? Acts 10.34. 
Then Peter began to speak. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. <laughs> you can move on. Mark 12, 31. The second is this, that you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. That would include Cracker Whitey. But no, the Dixon, the Dixon Church doesn't know any better. BLM Nashville, you are the only ones fueling the flames of hate, according to Greg Z. Everyone is just simply pointing out that you cannot just make up your own rules, especially with public places that the Civil Rights Act of 1964 covered. It still comes down to a taxpayer-owned building. <laughs> Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangie signing off. Do me a favor, go to The Correct Views at uh, Hotmail.com. Let me know you want to donate to the show. I'll tell you where to send any donations to, and all money that you give to me goes towards a better show. And I have a really crappy camera right now, so I really appreciate donations because correct views, lives matter. <laughs>